My name is Fabe Maraki and I'm here at Brighton Tattoo Museum in England and today I'm welcoming to the Eternal Clothing podcast series my Navajo friend Harvey Rees. He's over in America in Arizona right now and Harvey as well as being an amazing Indigenous tattoo artist is also a dance performer. He dances at powwows all over America and he makes all his jewellery himself. He makes all his outfits himself and I was really fortunate to meet him at the North Arizona Tattoo Convention this summer and Harvey was performing Native American dance and tattooing there and selling some of his hand craft items. So it was really great to meet him and I was really fortunate to be able to go and attend one of his performances whilst I was there. So that was on Native American Recognition Day and it was to open a baseball match um, for the Diamondbacks. So it was incredible. I actually went on my way to the airport so I had all my bags packed in the car. The stadium is right by the airport so I went there for a few hours just before getting my flight and saw Javi perform. So oh, welcome to the podcast, it's great to see you Javi. Thank you very much and I appreciate the invitation to uh, the podcast. Yeah it's really great to see you again, it was so cool to meet in America this year. Um, yeah, I loved seeing your performance and meeting you in the convention. It was a really good time. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think it was great that we were posted right next to each other. You know what I mean? Like, that was kind of not really random, but random in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think we've both got, like, some similar interests from, like, different, you know, totally different backgrounds and different ways of looking at things, but definitely have some similar passions with tattooing and Indigenous art and culture. Yeah, and I think that was great, because, like I said, once we met and we had the discussions over, like, what you do and everything like that, I think it's was, it was, it was awesome. So I've been very excited about it, so. Yeah, me too. Looking forward to uh, making my way out that way here soon too. So yeah, definitely. We're really looking forward to hosting you over here. I've been mentioning that you're going to be over here tattooing to a few people, and they're like, "Oh, let me know when." So I'm like, "Yeah, he's no. tattooing me first. <laughs> <laughs> me first, then you can all take a turn." <laughs> I I have an idea for you already. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to be doing uh, an actual like a Navajo style for you. Okay. Being, hold myself so yeah I'm looking forward to it so once we started talking about that and you're like I have a spot for you ready I was like all right cool let me think let me think and then all of a sudden it's like okay all right I I have I had a general idea and now it's even like I already know what I want to do so okay I'm so excited to see that yeah <laughs> definitely definitely saving that spot for you yeah I'm really keen for a Navajo style ankle band it'll be that'll be sick yeah, yeah. yeah it'd be pretty so like I said, it's all all in my head already. Everything's kind of like it's like okay. So I got some, I'm gonna be doing some more drawings as well. So that way I'll have everything prepared. But when I get there, I could just knock everything out. Yeah, great. Yeah, we can post some flash when you've got designs ready to share. Then we'll start sharing it with people over here so they know a little bit about what to expect when you come over. Very cool. Yeah, we're getting ready to do the uh, indigenous music and uh, arts convention out here so it's going to be nothing okay. but indigenous tattooers from all from turtle island so oh really wow where's yeah. this where's this convention it is here in phoenix it's on one of the uh, the gila river reservation so river. it'll be pretty cool first time that we're doing that this kind of thing has come across um because again with tattooers it's very there's very few indigenous tattooers that I personally know, and I know there's a lot more out there, but we're we're a very, very small minority in the tattoo community as is. So it's nice to kind of like get together and meet like all the other people that uh, I haven't had the chance to meet in person yet while being out on the tattoo road. So. Oh, that's so exciting. I bet that'll be really inspiring to all be together and be sharing you know like different backgrounds in tattooing and bringing you know celebrating that together as well i think that's super cool yeah for sure it said it's, it's definitely something that when the opportunity came up it was just like dude i'm down like 
sure. It's always been something that I've had an interest in doing and trying to get people together. Unfortunately, somebody beat me to the punch, but it's all good because it's a little different from what I have later planned in life. So. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Let me know how it goes. I'd love to come visit for that or something one day. Yeah, yeah for, sure. Uh, for yeah. sure. For sure. This is the first one that's going, uh, that's happening for the Indigenous tattoo community. So it'll definitely be something that's going to be like, okay, we'll see how, you know, see how it goes. You know how first time conventions can be. Yeah. A little bit slower and so on, but hopefully um, um, it won't be like that. Because again, it's definitely going to be something that's one of a kind mm -hmm. that hasn't happened just yet, like for Indigenous tattooers. So I'm very excited. Yeah. I can see that being like really, really popular. And sometimes when things are like smaller in the beginning, it's a bit more like intimate and it can have a real vibe to it. Like oh. I went to uh, this convention before in the Philippines and it was the first time that had been done. That's actually when I met the organizer, Tony from the uh, Arizona convention. And it was the first year this convention happened and we all just like hung out so much, you know, it was quite quiet with clients, but everyone just ended up yeah. like, partying together and we're all still friends yeah. like more than 10 years later still working in each other's shops and going around the world together is that um uh is that the convention that's in Cebu yeah that Greg Taylor organizes yeah party okay. in paradise yeah um the guy that puts that on he made his way into the shop before and uh he told me about it and I tried to do it uh, a couple of times as well Unfortunately, it's in, in the beginning of the year, so it's a little bit tougher to try to like manage my schedule around that time. So mm -hmm. definitely a show that I would like to try to do. Yeah. Out there and I like the beach, so why not? Yeah, it's really cool. There's so much to see after the show. We all kind of like stayed for two weeks and just went on a huge adventure. We went like to different waterfalls and islands and zip lining and swimming with whale sharks and Oh, yeah, that's so that's... cool. That's when I met Raul and I met Shanghai Kate and uh, Cyrus Slay and so nice. many cool artists. We had a great yeah. time. It was just like a holiday for tattooists, really. It's perfect. That's pretty much it. And, that's, that's, and I think that's why I've been trying to like get on that, just for the fact that, yeah, we might tattoo for a little bit, and whatever, but it's just the atmosphere there in itself. It's just more of a vacation than it really is an actual like, work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think most people spent more time in each other's booths than in their own. So <laughs> that's how it should be. We're there to network. <laughs> I definitely know how that goes. There's certain yeah. I go to that I hardly do any chat touring just for the fact that I'm here and that I'm here to hang out with all the homies that I don't get to see all year round. Exactly. So exactly. I definitely know how that goes. Yeah. Some shows are definitely okay, busier. Some shows I'm just there to hang out with my homies yeah I might for sure. one or two here I'm like, eh, whatever i might work today we'll see what happens but, yeah just do like a couple of small tattoos and then get to the bar yeah yeah that <laughs> was a hang out with the bros and that's why like you know some of the shows that i do that are my favorite ones is that's typically it's just i'm more excited to hang out with all the bros all the homies and everything before you know rather than actually sitting there and tattooing so but very few shows that i like to do that with so yeah yeah so you've been really busy with conventions this year haven't you i think every time i spoke with you you're like either going to one or coming back from one yes um and i've already gotten like the my year starting to set up for next year already so i'm just like okay cool here we go again which is you know it like i enjoy it but sometimes you know how it gets it can be a little exhausting like, traveling so much in a short period of time kind of wears you down physically and mentally you're just like oh, i just want to go home so so yeah. it, it happened but like when we met that was the second show for the month and i ended up doing another show so i did three shows in one month and i was just burnt out i was just like all right cool all right i'm just gonna hang out now and i took like a week off from work and i just laid in bed and been lazy for uh for that week just like recuperating you know what i mean yeah traveling can be really exhausting and conventions are really long days aren't they because you've got like the working day and then it goes through to the night and then you know everyone needs to go and eat and hang out afterwards and things like that you end up like your sleep becomes less and less all weekend I think and I'm always uh, like oh I'll uh, chill on the Monday 
and then the Monday you're like, well, whilst I'm here, I have to go and see stuff and go out with my friends. So yeah, always the week afterwards, I'm like, I need to be in bed. <laughs> if it's if it's a show that I've never done before, usually I, I try to I try to stay like a day or two after just so that I can actually see, you know, some of the stuff because I like to go to uh, what's the best spot to eat around here or you know what I mean? Like, what are you guys known for here? So I, I just really like to pick the the pick the places that are most popular with like with the locals the similarities of those are like even though the distance the, the distance between us like it's like i don't know it, it just kind of blew my mind but then it made me think again too it's just like like most you know people either in uh, north and south america like i consider all those people you know indigenous people like, like i'm not very fond of using the word native american for the fact that like there's natives all over this continent north and south you know what I mean? we have tribes all over uh from canada to to uh south america and that's what i think that makes it even better is because again like those are the similarities that we should be focusing on mm. those are the things that we like we you know before all the separation of this like there we do have similar ties in with each other just because we're we're not from the same area. Like there are similar things that we do. Like people, different tribes and have, uh, even North and South, different tribes have different versions of what they do at, at certain points of their lives. You know? Yeah. I think it may not be the exact same with, with it, but there's, there's some similarities to it, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think people's like similarities and differences should be celebrated as well. I think it's really nice right. to have those exchanges. Like it's it's what makes life inter interesting and like the diversity of humanity. I think it's super interesting. Yeah, actually, tell them my first two, which is uh, I come from uh, the Bitterwater people, and then my dad, which is my mom's. My mom, uh, that's my first clan. Is uh, is Tortini, which is the Bitterwater people, and then Nakai Dene is uh, of Mexican people. So that's my dad's side. So I typically introduce myself that way. So that way they know that I'm half and half. So the clan system that we have, that's how we also know who our extended families are. And it's a, it's a little difficult to explain how, how that stuff works because there's a lot of different factors that go into it. And for me, I still haven't got it all down to it. Cause again, like I was brought up in a very traditional way. So uh, the little I know is just off of like the little that I've, I've gathered throughout, you know, just meeting new people and talking to some of the elders and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it's interesting to like just how we as Diné people have that whole, like the whole family thing. It's, yeah. It's crazy. That's really nice, isn't it? To like have that sort of, you know, your people and for people to be able to trace their ancestors that way as well. I know some Navajo, unfortunately, I don't know how to speak it fluently. And, um, uh, that was just something that was never taught to me. It's something that I am trying to work on as right now, just so that way I can, I can speak it and I, I would like to keep that going for myself and I can, you know, pass that down as well. Because again, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, which is with everybody, just, you know, traditions are being lost because they're not being practiced or passed down the way they used to be. Uh, and I, that's just, you know, modern times coming changing yeah. in a different way. Like that, so. Yeah, a lot, a lot can be lost with a language as well. There's a lot of culture within a language I, I'm aware oh, of. Sure. And I know for you guys, obviously, you lost a lot with the colonial times as well. So it's important to hold on oh. to the traditions uh, and the knowledge. And yeah, it's so special. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, that's, that's a whole thing in itself as well. You know, like me personally... I think that's that's just very important, you know what I mean, for, for so sad. all all indigenous peoples that we've had to to go through that, you know, our ancestors had to go through that. And um, it's yeah, it's it's very heartbreaking, but again, we're still here, you know what I mean? We're still we're still thriving. But you know, it's gonna take a lot for that for us to to be to be driven out because we're still here we you know could have easily just gave up and whatever and, you know 
a lot of people and there's people now that are still fighting to keep those those traditions and those things alive so yeah that's so right we're still here like we are still here so. It's an important fight as well, isn't it? I think it's great to have that voice be heard that you are still here and, you know, to share those traditions and, and have your communities and all of that, speak the language. It's been great seeing your traditional dancing as well. You said that you express a lot of your culture and, you know, your feelings through your dance. And I can really see that come through when, when I saw you perform. It was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, I like to be out there. I like to, I, I just, it's it's different when you, when I'm in that. Yeah, you do your traditional dancing and I saw you made like your whole outfit yourself. Um, that was awesome. Can you tell me a bit about your, you know, your craft and jewelry making with that? Most of the stuff that I've done is, majority of the time in my outfit or my regalia is the beadwork. I do do a lot of feather work, um, but my beadwork definitely was, the most time consuming thing on there and uh that kind of stuff was uh taught to me. i learned that from a good friend of mine and he showed me how to do that so once i started making my own stuff it made it easier for me to really like not re not have to rely on people to help me because sometimes things do break and i need a quick fix in between songs or i need a quick fix in between certain um certain sessions so I kind of keep all that stuff with me as well. Uh, but that's just due to the fact that, you know, all my teachings and making my regalia and all my bee work and all that stuff like that. And I'm very thankful that I was taught that stuff because then again, I, I don't need to rely on anybody to do that kind of stuff for me. But if it happens, I can be like, okay, cool. I need, I, I'll be right back and go do this and do that. And then I can do my, my little picks and stuff up there. So, um, but I do do a, um it is interesting though because again like some of the stuff that i have done with it is it's just it's different uh, a lot of people again kind of like you know like oh that's that's really nice like i have deer leg armbands and you know i skinned those i dyed those and i, I made those you know by myself and again people are just like you do that yeah or whenever i do get feathers and i have to take it apart and stuff like that like i have to do that which is funny because i actually have i'm working on some stuff right now so nice making, are they uh, eagle feathers yes yeah, those are yeah uh, making uh, an inner row for another uh, for a bustle right now yeah but knowing how to do all the craft stuff is definitely something that i enjoy i, I enjoy making that kind of stuff and i enjoy that people um ask me to make stuff Stuff for them as well like it's it's for me it's um i take honor in that because this is a piece of their regalia that they're putting on when they get out into the arena and they dance like to me it's like i take that personally that you know i'm honored that you asked me to make this stuff i'm honored that you think of me and you know you uh you uh uh appreciate the work and the time that i've been so like that just it means a lot to me so there's a not just making it and you know it looks nice and whatever no like there's 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 feelings behind this there's emotions behind this this is you know even though this is yours i'm still putting me into this so yeah uh, but that's how I, I look at it when i make this kind of stuff for other people and for myself you know i take pride into it when people say like your outfit is gorgeous I'm like, thank you. I noticed, like, did you make it yourself? Yeah, I made it. I, there are a couple of things on my regalia that I did not make myself. Um, my uh, my moccasins were made from a very good friend of mine. She's like a sister to me. And she's a phenomenal bead worker. She's great. Her name is Erica Welsh, and she's she's very cool. And her, her bead work is, is, is very, very good. Um, my, my other brother which is her significant other. His name is uh, Chris Astor. And she made his outfit for him. And he's got, his outfit is, is it makes me want to redo my feet work. So that way, <laughs> like every time it's I- It's not good. I got, I need to redo it. Yeah, because we did different stitchings with it. You know what I mean? Okay. 
So like I was trying to finish my outfit in a certain in a shorter amount of time. So I did what we call lazy stitch. And that's why like it was faster for mine. His isn't a, isn't a lazy stitch. It's more of a like a, a straight stitch or whatever. And um so his looks like it's a lot cleaner than mine. Like with mine you could tell the different rows and stuff like that. It still looks, you know, it's still very, very beautiful and very nice. Um, but sometimes uh if you really put everything down and, and tack everything down, um, it just looks a lot cleaner sometimes. So, mm. and that's how it is. It. So every time that him and I get to share the arena or uh, entering grand entry, I look at his and I'm just like, damn, I got to redo mine again. <laughs>